Hey everyone, and welcome to this video on which browser is best for your front-end environment. Now, there are several browsers, but one thing you'll find and know very quickly is that Chromium is just eating up all the competition. Not so much because it is the dominant market share of all browsers, especially used by front-end devs, but the engine itself is being used by other browsers. So browsers like uh, Microsoft Edge, Opera, Brave, they're all starting to use Chromium now. And these are big browsers with pretty big market share. You might see that Google Chrome doesn't actually own the majority of the market. Well, it does own the majority of the market share, but it doesn't have all of it. But when you add up all the other browsers that use Chromium, it's a huge amount. Now, what does that mean for a front-end dev? Well, you look at this stuff and you think, well, what's actually useful for me in my day-to-day -day work? If we take one browser at a time, we'll look at Google Chrome first. Now, Google Chrome is the main big daddy of browsers for front-end. It has some of the best tooling. Like if we have a look here, it has everything that you need. It has uh, all the main tools, all the performance stuff, and even more. It's, it's a fantastic tool set. But there are a lot of issues with Chrome. One of the main issues, and I think this is a movement that started in the last few years that's really resonated within people, is that privacy is a massive issue. Now, Google have famously tracked uh, people's usage of a browser and just general day-to-day -day tracking. And there's so many extra scripts and things running in Chrome just to track what you're doing. And it slows the browser down uh, it's an absolute RAM monster, like it just eats your RAM up. And on a MacBook and on Apple devices using Chrome, it actually runs a lot worse, a lot worse. So Chrome just doesn't really cut it. It has the best tools, but that's Chromium. You could get that on many other browsers. So you take that away and what do you have left? You have something that's kind of RAM hungry, hardware intensive, not great for your privacy. There's a lot of downsides for it. Yeah, it certainly shouldn't use for browsing. Just your general day-to-day -day browsing, maybe for development, but I'd argue there's better options out there. Now, if we look into Firefox, it is a different kettle of fish entirely. This is on a different engine, very privacy focused, um, not as much as others, but they do care about that stuff. They also care about building the right tools. Now, the problem is with Firefox, they're a much smaller team than Chrome is. And when you're building your own engine, you're gonna suffer. Uh, any feature you create for devs is just gonna be made in a few weeks by someone in the Chrome team or, or people in the Chrome team, because just because the team's so huge, they'll take a new feature that Firefox releases and probably do it much better in far less time and be out the door really quickly. This is the problem that Firefox faces and you, you're kind of like playing with a losing browser in a sense that, you know, if you get invested into this ecosystem and you're like, you know, what, I want to do some dev work in this. Well, the tools are, especially in the developer edition that is focused on developers is slow. It's clunky. All the grid stuff in there is super slow. All the CSS stuff that they tout, all the styling and front-end stuff that they're kind of focused in and that I'm really proud of. It's just really slow and the whole browser itself is clunky. Um, it has memory leak issues. Like after a while, it just completely struggles. Multiple browsers, it has a cap. Like it, it's really struggles. Personally, between the two, I, I did experiment using uh, Firefox for about a month compared to Chrome and it was painfully obvious how how easier it was to develop in Chrome as compared to Firefox. Yeah, the aesthetics of the Firefox brow, uh, browser developer edition is really cool. Uh, I love the black and green, um, the aesthetics, the look and feel of it, it's amazing. Uh, I think it looks better than Chrome in my opinion. But when it comes to the actual front-end side of things when it comes to the actual tooling it's just not up to snuff it's too slow it ain't good enough and to be honest uh, you haven't got time to mess around with uh, something that's slow uh, and pretty inconvenient 
They've got a nightly edition, which they update every night. They've got several versions, really, but they all have the same problems. Safari is... Safari is an interesting one because it is, in my opinion, like pretty bad. The actual inspector experience for developers is really slow, really clunky. Uh, it does remind me of Internet Explorer a bit in that sense that they just really haven't developed the uh, the developer tools very well. But having said that, as of the last few months, they've really focused on privacy. Uh, they've really improved on just focusing on protecting your traffic, protecting your usage, and just uh, improving the performance as well of Safari on, on Apple products. So if you were to have an Apple product uh, using Safari, as opposed to Chrome, let's say, your MacBook MacBook's battery would actually last a lot longer. So there are certain benefits of using Safari uh, as a developer, but personally, uh, it doesn't outweigh a lot of the problems that it has, a lot of the drawbacks that it has, and a lot of the handicaps it has compared to other browsers out there. And I would not recommend to use this because there's a lot of tools that uh, other browsers have that I would consider invaluable that Safari pretty much lacks. Um, also, Safari has this weird thing where they say that they support certain features and they include it into the browser, but they don't actually support it. They've just included it into their spec. And it's one really frustrating thing about Safari that they claim that it's supported and it's included in Safari, but they haven't implemented it because it's a tough thing to do. Uh, it's a problem that browser engines have, uh, browser engine teams. It's about how much manpower you can put behind developing it. Um, and to be honest, Apple should have done better. With the amount of money they have and the amount of resources they have, they should be at least be able to compete with Chrome. But for some reason, it's just a subpar product. Uh, I do see a lot of people uh, using it, but for development, for front-end, you should avoid this. If you are someone who actually does front-end seriously, you won't see them using Safari. Now, Opera is a Chromium-based engine. It's actually using uh, Chromium. So that means you get all the same developer tools as Chrome. But the benefit of Opera is that they are quite privacy focused. So they do focus on the privacy side of things. They, um, they have a lot of cool features built in that uh, they try to differentiate themselves but in essence, it is better than Chrome because already you've got something that's taken what Chrome has, but taken out all the excess features, the tracking, all the rubbish that you get with uh, Chrome and made a much faster, cleaner, performant product that is a different experience. But at the same time, for a developer, you have all the tools that you need. So it is a pretty good one and it's quite underrated. It is something that I would probably explore looking into. One of the best features that it has and one of the probably uh, features that it does better than other products is its synchronization across lots of different apps. It's, it's something that Brave still hasn't done quite yet quite well. Um, so hats off to the Opera team done a great job on that. Now the next browser is the one that I use. The reason why I use it is it is based off a of Chromium engine so you get all the amazing tools that you get with Google Chrome but it is very privacy focused so they have all the tracking, all the rubbish, all the excess scripts that they've used to track you, to hinder your privacy on Google Chrome. They've completely taken that out. And you get this wonderful system where you can have multiple profiles as well in Brave. So you can have your personal browsing and your work profile separated. So you could have a workspace just for work and you can have a workspace just for browsing. So you could work on your workspace environment and not have any social media stuff on it. So when you try to log into social media, it kind of blocks yourself from trying to log into social and you know waste your time whereas you can just completely focus. It's got all the same tooling. It's uh, got a really interesting 
browser reward system so you can actually get rewarded just for browsing the internet uh, you can use all the uh, chrome extensions that you would normally with chrome and for its uh, incognito mode or its uh, private window it uses uh, an onion router or an onion browser called uh, tor which you probably all have heard of it also has a really good inbuilt uh, blocker and uh, because it is a browser they don't really whitelist so like you origin will probably have companies that pay them to whitelist certain websites and certain ads whereas brave won't it's something that i use for my personal work it's something i also use uh, just for work itself learning it's something i would recommend if you are serious about front-end development and you need a serious piece of kit that brave is the one that you go for and just try it out if you're already using chrome you're not going to see a major difference uh, it'll basically be the same you'll just have to set your bookmarks again or maybe even not just sync your gmail account up and you're away so definitely take a look at that brave is my recommendation and it's something that you can use for personal browsing and for work as well so hopefully that was useful in helping you choose the best browser for your front-end development environment now, in my opinion, it's brave, but you might come to a different conclusion. So go and have a look, try out the different browsers and just see what works best for you. My name's been Harry and this has been Curious Byte.